intense vibes with Lloyd Thomas and Simeon Brown. Where are you? Edu FM, the home of family entertainment. What's up, it's your boy Simeon Brown and I'm saying Gen Z vibes is on right now on FUFM, the home of family entertainment. Lloyd Thomas, we got this bro. And of course, we are at our Youth in Focus segment. And in studio today, we have a guest artist. So I'd like him to introduce himself to the entire population. Hey everyone, my name is Simeon Brown. How are you guys doing? So we're good here at Edu FM and we're good at Gen Z Vibe. And I guess the rest of the country, they're doing excellent because the weather is quite okay today. So Simeon, introduce yourself to us. Tell us about you. Tell us who is the person behind the name Simeon Brown. Well, um, so Simeon Brown is a music producer, a writer, generally a creative, but also a youth who is focused um, seriously on creating change through music, through the use of his uh, skills and talents. Um, essentially, that is who I am in a nutshell, yeah. Okay, so I like the fact that you said that you are enthusiastic about creating change, and that's what we need right now for youth advocacy. So I'm big into the performing arts, I'm big on music, I'm big on dance, drama. So today we're going to have a little talk about music. So tell us what have you been doing so far with music? Um, well, I started producing music like um, when I was like uh, 14 years old. And so this is like more than a decade ago. Um, I got to collaborate with uh, many of the popular artists of that time and even, even of this time. Um, I also actually initially I started writing music, but then that translated differently because obviously I, I could sing as well. And, um, and so I was encouraged to do that even, you know, from church and nursery school and that kind of thing. And I've got memories of this and I have photographs to support it. But th th that works as a reminder to show the foundation. Um, over the years, we've transitioned into not just writing and obviously singing music, but, you know, we've been producing music, collaborating. I started one of my first jobs, you know, um, as an adult was as a music producer. You know, that was my focus, that was my career at 18 years old. So we've been doing that for some years and um, yeah, I'm here. That's quite a refreshing background with music and you started at age 14, which is a very tender age. Now, I know that um, you're, you're big on the music because I've been reading an article here um, stating that the, the team is more than wordy and it has been talking a lot about you and showing about your your different um your diversity and how well you're rounded but before we go into that article let's talk about the writing of music we know that music is a form of poetry and what from the music that i've been listening i know there's a type of poetry called ode which are tribute poems and i see you do a lot of tributes so <laughs> is it something that you like or do you explore anything else outside of that well generally well i'm into poetry as well but Generally, you know, music and writing, um, they're my way of expressing myself. You know, sometimes we speak and even, you know, you can be fluent and you can obviously have a good command of the language, but you may find that someone interprets better relative to their situation, to their understanding of things when they read or when they listen. And, and, and that is how, that is the appreciation for how differently things translate. My expression is similar in, in that regard is that it can come through me showing my appreciation by writing a poem or singing a song or you know writing a song for someone else or even just making posts to express that kind of thing it generally it is about the creativity extends in such a way that it's limitless how you express it but obviously you know the combination between poetry and music is so close you know it's relative it's almost one and the same except for you know the addition of melodies and that kind of thing and instrumentation so surely you see how they they combine together so smoothly and how they're able to make an impression 
Yes, and it's all about making that impression. So which takes me back to one of our uh, favorite rappers um, who passed on, God rest the dead, uh, Tupac. He was a poet. And from his poetry, he uh, de derived rap and brought a whole new meaning to rap. And it was very meaningful to us. So I heard that you write pieces for people and that you're into this music. You like music. Music is life. How do you balance your regular lifestyle with work and family and music? <laughs> I think I think I think the, the question of balance suggests that you know you've got two different things and you've got to try to keep them on an even keel, so to say. But for me, you know, music is it's engraved in my life. It is a part of who I am. And all that is around me understands and appreciates that. So what that means is that. The question of balance is more or less, it's like a no-brainer thing, you know. I'm like, you know, the, 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 I figure the article you're referring to um, and that song, I did that song within the space of, I think, less than 24 hours. So I started like, you know, at, at 4 p.m. or 4.30 and I finished the next morning. Um, it's, that just goes to show you the availability, the time, and obviously the, 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 the permission, so to say, if you want to consider family and that kind of thing, that I would need to have, you know, that escape to be able to do this. So balance for me is just being able to express myself freely and never having to be thrown in or conquered or overthrown by something. So nothing is more than the other. Meditation, prayer, a lot of reading, obviously appreciation for people. But just to be cognizant of what is happening around me, I think, gives, you know, a greater sense of balance. The universe, the galaxies, nature itself, that is, you know, for me, that is what balance represents. And I, I tend to meditate and think about that a lot. So, yeah. Okay, so I see that you, you have a fair understanding of it and that you have your hands really filled, but you are be able to maneuver and manage now you talk about the, the the song being written in less than 24 hour and based on the article here i'm seeing you started at 4 4 p.m the afternoon and you finished 3 a.m the next morning now what i want to say about that is that i found through research that most creatives they work late hours <laughs> we find ourselves that even at sleep our brains are working so they For always sure. say that if you're creative you should have a pen and a book next to your bed head so if in the middle of the night something comes you get up you write it down and then you go back to your life. But I know for me, I don't know if it's the same for you. My brain is always working. There's a new concept. There's a new way to put over something. I don't know if you experience the same thing. It is interesting for, to hear you say that because I was at a, an entrepreneurial fun day um, just um, last week and I was inquiring. So we're talking about, that's the thing about balance again, right? And we're talking about how do you find that balance? And I was saying that. My thing is that my brain is always working, it's working, it's working, it's always coming up with ideas to, you know, create new ideas to express yourself, to focus or to highlight or to bring awareness to something. And a fellow entrepreneur was saying to me, she said, exactly what you just said, she said, always have a book and a pen. Yes. <laughs> Next to your bed. So, um, you know, you get an idea and you just write it down. But she says, over time, what is going to happen is, as you find people who you're comfortable with, you know, to be able to do some of the tasks that you're doing you may find that you'll ease and you'll you know find some sort of escape if needed so to say yeah yes but there's no es escaping <laughs> from creativity it's always there right and sometimes i think um as a creative we find that we heavily criticize ourselves we be very critical of our own work and so while others may see it as very perfect we always find some loophole in it but remember yeah. we're the person who we're producing it for an audience and sometimes you have to remind yourself you're producing for an audience mm. and not for yourself because i've learned that we can write as many music um piece musical pieces we can write as many poems and songs as we can and we leave them there and if they're unpublished it makes no sense and it's not worth it so yeah. that's another thing i find doing writing pieces and leave them there in a book um, I know that you recently launched a song and it's the name of it is More Than Worthy More Than Worthy yes. and I also uh, saw that it is a new theme song for the EduFM Women Empowerment Program because it speaks to the essence of feminism you want to yeah. tell us a bit about that that song <clears throat> certainly um, so you know More Than Worthy is my expression of appreciation and interestingly just last evening um before i announced that you would be on with me today for your show 
I was talking about the watchword for my program, the community train was appreciation, right? So it all comes, I, I love how this is all coming together. So more than worthy is my expression of appreciation for women generally. And you know, Lloyd, as we're talking about this, I've been playing, you know, since we started and I heard you talk about International Men's Day. And the thought came to mind that perhaps, you know, highlighting a song of this nature may come over as taking away. But we we often forget, all right? And this is why I said feminism, that's this is why I said the women empowerment show highlights feminism in its true and intended sense because this is not about bashing the other person or bashing, you know, the other, you know, bashing men and that kind of thing or segregation between men and women because feminism, as I read when I was like 10 years old, reading my mother's books and that kind of thing, focus on actually the quality of things on actually understanding that these are counterparts and we're going to rise with them and we're going to stand for a better life for all and when we talk about that, then you see how even on today's date, you know, International Men's Day, we, there is no issue with highlighting yet again, you know, the, the contributions of women. Because similarly, as there, as there are single parent mothers in the world who've groomed and who've really brought and, and, and raised, you know, outstanding men and women, there are single parent men in the world who have done the same thing. And so that is that is something that I just wanted to put out there. But more than worthy, you know, the Women Empowerment Show, like I said, highlights feminism in its true and intended sense. And so it was fitting for me to see how, and it wasn't intended, like initially I didn't set out to write a song to do that. I just wanted to express how I was feeling and like I said, appreciation for women. And when I did that, I, I saw how it aligned you know, with this, with this program and, 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 you know, and I got this message from a colleague of mine all the way in the UK. And she said to me, she said, this is, this is interesting. And this is going to blow your mind. She said, do you worship women? She said, do you worship women? Because you wear an ankh and this song, when I listen to this song, you have no idea how this song made me feel. And it didn't stop there. It started there. But then when I came to work and then when I just got messages and everything and everybody just... And then this this idea of that becoming the theme song came about. And it wasn't even mine. So, you know, it is amazing how things turn out, how things play out. But all in all, I mean, it is about appreciation for each other. And I think I did a great job, if I do say so myself, with that song. Yeah. Yes, so definitely you can give yourself a pat on the shoulder. And we know that um, the universe actually speaks to us. And so our inspiration comes from the people, our past experiences, our childhood. It comes from everything, from society and our interactions. So we must listen as creative to the universe. So you mentioned reading books from your mom. So I'd like you to tell me... Um, was your family, uh, how, how did they play an integral role in this development in terms of your musical background and your upbringing in music? Tell me a bit about that. Well, um, I, happily. Um, so, you know, music for me, right? And like I'm saying, like many instances, initially it was, it was a writing thing. I mean, I used to sing, but I was much more better at, you know, writing. I was much better at writing. And I think that came from my mother who actually resides in the UK, she did something when I was, when I was a child. And she, she migrated when I was 12. So she did something when I was around six, six years old. She said, read your dictionary. You know, and this is EduFM, the home of family entertainment in which we're focused on, you know, educating and obviously entertaining families and youth particularly. And this program is Gen Z Vibes. And I'm saying to you that my mother made me read a dictionary as a child. So that was the start of it. And obviously, <laughs> when I was at home and she wasn't, I read all of her novels. She was a nurse. So obviously, I got a chance. I got exposure to child psychology. I got exposure to, to child to psychology i got exposure to so much of our books medical journals and that kind of thing so i think that is the strength of it all that i got this foundation in literature and the melodies and my voice i think that that was natural 
But that foundation in literature, my appreciation and, and my intimate, as I say, as I put it, my intimate relationship with the language, I think that is perhaps the most or one of the most um, you know, pivotal uh, foundations or elements of my foundation in, 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 as a creative. And so that is where I got, I got, you know, I got to put my foot in it. I mean, you know, I got to, hey, I'm going to write. I started writing and then I started singing and I started forming better songs, better poetry, better pieces, better articles as I, as I came along. Um, I definitely got the support outside of that. My brother is my biggest fan to date and, you know, he's my younger brother. And he's always been there. He's always been telling me, you know, hey, you sound good. You're better at this. You're, you're not too good at that you should focus on this genre and that kind of thing and he's always been there and my mother has always obviously supported my singing i remember singing you know at family gatherings my grandfather you know he promoted that as well as you know you would take me to and from uh, nursery school so i've got those memories and i would say that i got you know i got very good support from family very immediate family especially so kudos, I know you mentioned your mom, kudos to your mom for that initiative and the kudos and continued support from your brother, who is one of your biggest fans. And I like the fact that this is Edu Entertainment and he spoke about reading a dictionary and we can see evidence of it because of his extensive vocabulary and his speech quality. So we know that his mother's advice did work out for the best. Now, <laughs> today is International Men's Day and you are one of our developing men in Guyana who contributing to who is contributing to the musical fraternity. I would like you in closing to tell us what you would advise a young man out there or a young boy who is listening to the program and wants to become something great or has a musical inclination. What advice would you give to them or what is one of your mantra that you would like to share with us today before we close the program? Thank you. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Um, you know, one of the most important things for me was to believe in myself. As a person, as a creative, believing in yourself, you know, is is such a powerful thing. Um, we talked about, I had this discussion like two days ago with a colleague of mine. Um, well, uh, you know, he, he works in the military and we've, we've got this word that we like to talk about conscientiousness is to know what is required of you and to, to do it. And so, and in, and in faith, we talk about social responsibility as a person as a as a young man it is very important that you understand what is required of you what your responsibilities are and you understand the roles that you know may be uh given to you as a man as a person as a citizen as a member of a family as the, as a member of the community understand the responsibility but also understand how much reach how effective how affecting your actions can be to the other person to people and to yourself so me as a creative those are things that i needed to establish foremost and just keep working just keep working you know irrespective of your religious inclination and that kind of thing just keep giving your best if you're not going to give your best you may you might as well not do it and be kind these are the things that i say to my son who's nine years old and these are the kind of things that i would say the kinds of things that i would say to anyone i come into contact with because and and one of my one of my favorite things to live by you know it is a chapter from the from the quran actually and it says and what that means is it says verily mankind is at loss except he is patient and promotes righteousness and enjoins one another to do the same to promote righteousness that my friend is I think what has kept me as a creative, as a person, as a musician, as a father, as a citizen. Yes. So that is my advice to anyone listening, especially young men. 
especially young men. So there you have it. We just had Simeon Brown, a local singer, songwriter, and content producer. Thank you very much, Simeon, for being here with us today as we continue to go through our trending tunes. Gen Z Vibes with Lloyd Thomas and Simeon Brown. Where you need to be. LUFM, the home of family entertainment. Crazy. Hey, what's up? It's your boy Simeon Brown, and I'm saying Gen Z Vibes is on right now on LUFM, the home of family entertainment. 